and welcome to X-Ray Review. In this video, we are going to discuss diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, or DISH. So diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, or DISH, is a very common condition characterized by ligamentous ossification or hyperostosis, usually seen in the anterior longitudinal ligament. Now, DISH is the term that the late great Don Resnick came up with but there's other AKAs such as Forestier's disease. Uh, and this condition is very common, again, usually seen in males, more frequent than females, with the age of usually 50 or older, although it can present in younger. Uh, it will have clinical signs and symptoms very similar to degenerative joint or disc disease. Many patients who have uh, DISH have also associated diabetes mellitus also, there can be clinical symptoms of dysphagia with difficulty swallowing. And then there are also cases of ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, which may have neurologic complications associated with it. On an x-ray, the most common radiographic features of DISH are flowing hyperostosis of three or more contiguous segments, relative preservation of the intervertebral disc height, and then absence of posterior element fusion. And we'll go through each of these findings closely. The key radiographic feature of DISH is flowing hyperostosis or bridging spondylophyte formation in three or more contiguous segments. And this is best seen in this highlighted region anterior to the cervical spine. And again, this is continuous flowing hyperostosis, a key feature of DISH. Another feature is relative preservation of intervertebral disc height of the involved segments. In degeneration or degenerative disc disease, the intervertebral disc height is usually significantly decreased. But with DISH, you'll see relative preservation of these disc heights. And this is a key feature to look for. There is a specific absence of involvement of the facet articulations or apotheceal joints, the costo transverse, and also the sacroiliac articulations. Unlike some type of seronegative spondyloarthropathies like ankylosing spondylitis, which favor these locations, DISH does not. In some cases of DISH, there's ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament. This is usually seen posterior to C2 to C5, and if present, can cause canal stenosis or other neurologic complications. It's not always there, but something to look for. And here's an example of ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament seen posterior to C2, C3. And since DISH affects different ligamentous structures, there can also be peripheral hyperostosis observed, in this case in the ankle, but commonly seen in other areas like the pelvis. And let's take a look at some real cases of DISH. I've got about 15 or so examples. Uh, this case is a 51-year-old male who presented with a decreased range of motion and you can see a great example of flowing hyperostosis that is continuous from C2 down to C6, and the anterior aspects of the vertebral bodies are only barely visible, and it looks almost completely ossified in their sparing of the posterior elements. This is a 57-year-old male with thick exuberant calcification noted at the anterior aspect of C2, which is discontinuous and then appears continuous flowing all the way down to C7. There's relative preservation of the intervertebral disc heights as well as lack of posterior element involvement. Classic appearance of DISH. This is a 66 year old male with a history of diabetes and you'll notice flowing hyperostosis of the anterior longitudinal ligament, no evidence of ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, and then again, relative preservation of intervertebral disc height and lack of posterior element involvement. This is a 49-year-old male with thick flowing chunky hyperostosis of the anterior longitudinal ligament, and this 
um, type of dish, presentation of dish, can be associated with dysphagia. And that makes sense why a patient may have difficulty swallowing with such large hyperostosis. Incidentally noted are some calcifications of the nuchal ligament or nuchal bones, which are of no clinical significance. Here is a good example of a 70 year old male with significant hyperostosis of the anterior longitudinal ligament with accompanying degenerative changes. This is a 61 year old diabetic female uh, with DISH and there's some mild changes in the cervical spine but what is unique about this case is there is ossification of the longus coli, which is inferior to the anterior tubercle, which is forming a unique pseudo-articulation with this prominent hyperostosis visualized at C2. Here is a 59-year-old male with classic dish seeing flowing hyperostosis of the anterior longitudinal ligament as well as relative uh, preservation of the intervertebral disc heights and lack of posterior element involvement. This is a 77 year old male with a complex case of DISH involving complete ossification of the anterior longitudinal ligament in the cervical spine, lack of posterior element involvement, and then ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, very thick extending all the way down from C2 down to C5. And then also visualized is ossification of the stylohyoid ligaments. So uh, due to the presence of the OPLL, uh, this patient, if they presented with neurologic symptoms, uh, an MRI or CT would be recommended to quantify that canal stenosis. This is an 82 year old male with a significant case of DISH, complete fusion of C2 down to C5, uh, and then the only movable joint really in the cervical spine, and then fusion inferior to that segment. Uh, there is ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament, which is not well seen here, but this patient had symptoms from it, thus a decompressive laminectomy throughout the visualized lower cervical uh, spine. So this is a complex case of DISH with neurologic symptoms and uh, post-surgical. Moving down into the thoracic spine, which is actually the most common location to visualize diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. And what we're looking for is a homogeneous flowing density anterior to the vertebral bodies. And as we zoom in, you'll notice the flowing hyperostosis of the anterior longitudinal ligament, which is radiographically how it appears in the thoracic spine. This is a 50 year old male with flowing hyperostosis anterior to these thoracic segments. And this is a classic presentation of DISH. And moving down into the lumbar spine, this is a 72 year old male with uh, diabetes and flowing hyperostosis of the anterior longitudinal ligament discontinuous uh, throughout the visualized lumbar spine. Uh, this patient also has atherosclerosis of the abdominal aorta and common iliac arteries. I'm often asked whether or not these uh, osteophytes or hyperostosis will puncture or rupture the adjacent abdominal aorta and in short, the answer is no, it's a 2D image of a 3D object. So if you could see on axial CT, um, they're, while they are adjacent, um, that is not a direct concern. And this last case is a 65 year old male who has DISH. However, uh, this x-ray should be a little bit confusing. Uh, there is some, are some findings like iliolumbar ligament ossification, what looks almost like marginal syndesmophyte formation, um, massive overcoverage of the acetabuli and hyperostosis. However, the sacroiliac articulations are you know, somewhat visible here and are not fused. And this patient again does have DISH, but DISH can 
absolutely mimic seronegative spondyloarthropathy such as ankylosing spondylitis and I will make a video on a later date uh, with some of those differences and how it can easily be confused but AS and DISH can definitely look very very similar so um, be aware of that and I'll make a video at a later date and thank you for listening. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed all of those different cases of dish. If you did, please like and subscribe. And any questions or comments, please put them below. Thanks again.